right now on the state of the economy, a Fox 43 Money Smart report. Economic turmoil, fluctuating economic trends are affecting every facet of our life, from the cost of food we buy at the store to the availability of the goods we use every day. From inflation, it reduces the purchasing power of your income, to rising costs, I've just noticed that my bill this year has been higher every time, to struggling business owners, it's very hard to find someone who's willing to come in here and do the jobs that sometimes people don't want to do. The economy is in a delicate position. We're going to state business leaders and local experts to get the answers to your questions and to provide clarity on some of your biggest concerns so that you can stay money smart. Good evening. Thank you for joining us on this Fox 43 News special report. I'm Matt Mazel. President Biden's first State of the Union address takes place tomorrow. He will almost certainly touch on the biggest issues the country is facing right now. Coronavirus, international tensions, and of course, the economy. The economy is usually the biggest issue when it comes to how people view the success of a president. It's also the top issue in nearly every election. Ahead of the 2020 election, a Pew Research poll found nearly 8 in 10 Americans said the economy would be very important when it came to who they were going to vote for. You've no doubt experienced or read about the economic struggles plaguing people and businesses across the country. Some of you have even sent in questions or concerns. Over the next half hour, we will be getting answers from experts in our own backyard to help keep you money smart. Let's start with inflation. It is high and has been for months. From December 2020 to December 2021, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reports consumer prices rose 7%. That's the largest percent change during a calendar year in more than four decades. That price increase is taking a toll on consumer confidence and could potentially eat into your hard-earned paycheck. But what causes prices to increase so sharply? It's simple ec economics, supply and demand. Inflation. And inflation. 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 You've probably heard that word a lot recently, but what exactly is inflation? So inflation is a persistent increase in the overall price level or the aggregate price level. So it's not the change in the price of an individual product. It's when prices overall are going up. Here's where the basic lesson in economics starts. Coronavirus cases have been on the decline recently, and the economy is starting to recover from the pandemic-induced recession. Households are consuming more and spending more, whether it's due to money saved during the pandemic or a recent wage increase. At a certain point, we might push against the economy's capacity to produce, and so prices might start going up. So we cannot produce more. Instead, we're going to see prices going up. Demand for goods is high, and manufacturers are struggling to reach pre-pandemic levels of production. Simply put, supply isn't able to keep up with demand. That means suppliers are able to increase the price of their goods with relatively high assurances that people will still purchase. The Consumer Price Index tracks inflation, and this past year, the CPI ballooned to 7%, the highest it's been since 1982. The U.S. government calculates inflation on a monthly basis. They survey U.S. Uh, households to decide what is it that the average household consumes to come up with this representative basket of goods and services. And then they track the value of this basket over time, and that's your CPI. So what does this mean for your budget? It reduces the purchasing power of your income. Uh, if your wages were to increase in line with inflation, of course, then your purchasing power would not decrease. If your wages aren't increasing, though, your money won't go as far, and it may be harder to afford day-to-day -day items. The good news? Experts predict inflation rates will eventually go down. It just depends on how quickly manufacturers can increase supply. Our baseline expectation is that supply bottlenecks and shortages will persist in elevated inflation as well and that as the pandemic subsides, inflation will decline from today's elevated levels. Experts say in order for inflation numbers to subside, suppliers need to ramp up production to meet current market needs. Most people are probably noticing inflation-related price increases at grocery stores, and that sticker shock can be frustrating, prompting some to even claim that grocery price increases are massively exceeding the increasing inflation rate. We went to the experts to verify that claim.
It's no secret you're paying more at the grocery store for everyday items, but exactly how much is a big point of discussion on social media? Take this video on Twitter from CNN with more than 5 million views, where a family of nine claims the price of milk is up 40%. So let's verify. Did the nationwide average price of a gallon of milk go up 40% last year? Our sources are the Center for Dairy Excellence and the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The family says they were paying $1.99 for a gallon of milk this time a year ago, and the current price is $2.79. However, the Bureau of Labor Statistics says the cheaper price was far below average. Accord either with our data or certainly with my personal experience, I, I think I'd have to go back a long time to think of a gallon of milk below $2. The BLS tracks the national average of several grocery staples and says in January 2021, milk was $3.47 a gallon. A year later, in January of 22, the price was $3.79, an increase of 9%. That segment sort of made it sound like inflation was driving that solely responsible for driving the cost of that increase. That's simply not true. The Center for Dairy Excellence says everything from freight to processing to packaging and even a retailer's markup all contribute to the increase. Meanwhile, the CDE says the price farmers actually get for their milk has remained steady over the past year. So it's false that the nationwide average price of a gallon of milk is up 40%. The CDE recommends shoppers watch for deals. Some retailers are starting to take a lower cut from milk sales just to keep shoppers coming through their doors. It was very, very hard. We did everything we could think of. We put it on Facebook, we did ads in the paper, we did Indeed. We used a lot of different resources, but it was very hard. That local business owner says they've been struggling to fill open positions. Workforce shortages have impacted nearly every industry. Still ahead, how businesses are finding some relief in a unique partnership. Workforce shortages have impacted nearly every industry. Small businesses are struggling to find enough skilled workers. And as Fox 43's Rachel Yankuna shows us, a local business found the help they needed through a unique partnership. Carving out a success story requires attention to detail and a chance to show people what you're capable of. 24-year-old Philip Klumpsick didn't have many chances in life often overlooked because of his intellectual and developmental disability, until elite cabinetry in York County gave him a shot at his first job. What is that like to have a job and to have this independence? Fantastic. My parents are like, okay, you need to get a job, you need to get out of the house. I'm like, yes, finally, I need to get out of the house, get on my feet, time to earn my living. When we gave him his first paycheck, he said, I've never had a paycheck. And I wanted to cry because we were giving him something that he had never had. When the state shut down two years ago, elite cabinetry was tapped to shift operations. All other projects were stopped. We had product ready to be installed. We had product that we had to pay for the labor and the material, but we weren't installing the job and not getting paid. So there was a lot of financial issues with that, obviously. When the state reopened, business piled on. Suddenly, they needed more hands. As did other businesses across the state, the competition was fierce and finding workers wasn't easy. We did everything we could think of. We put it on Facebook, we did ads in the paper, we did Indeed. It's very hard to find someone who's willing to come in here and do the jobs that sometimes people don't wanna do. The, the little jobs. And those are small jobs, but they have a big impact. Oh, They're important. Without those, we can't do the big jobs. That's where Philip comes in. He had been searching for work through the employment program at Penmar Human Services. The nonprofit helps people with disabilities live their best lives. Dozens of companies are turning to them for help with staffing shortages. All of a sudden, I was getting phone calls from them during the pandemic saying, okay, we're ready now. And I've been able to, you know, um, partner with some really great people in our community and employers in our community. So, oh, so in a way, this opened a lot of doors it for did. people. It did. It did. And 
Matt, uh, Pedmar says that businesses that are struggling to fill those open positions can reach out to them for help. They have a lot of people eager to find work, and you can find their information on fox43.com. Great story, Rachel. How many job openings are there in Pennsylvania right now? Well, as of December 2021, which is the most recent data from the U.S. Department of Labor, Pennsylvania has 495,000 mm. job openings. That's an increase of 73,000 more openings than the month before. And we saw a lot of layoffs in the first year of that of the uh, pandemic. How, how does that compare to what we're seeing right now? It's not quite nearly as mm -hmm. bad, but it is still happening. Uh, so far this year, businesses have laid off more than 1,100 workers just within uh, the first two months of 2022. So companies are still making those tough decisions. All right, Rachel, thank you so much. Changes, meanwhile, to Pennsylvania's economy start in Harrisburg with the laws and regulations currently in place. That poses a potential problem given how difficult it can be for a Democratic governor to work with a Republican-controlled legislature. However, Governor Tom Wolf recently proposed one idea which, at the very least, has the GOP's attention. Budget day at the state capitol. The pomp and circumstance of the governor's annual State of the State report quickly revert back to partisan politics. I know that as soon as I'm done here, folks are going to run out to the hallway and take shots at the pieces of my budget they don't like. As I was coming down all the day, as I told the governor he had to get out of my way so I could come out and blast his budget. This is the game Harrisburg politicians play, except this year there was one four second clip which caught lawmakers' attention. I think our corporate tax rate is too high. This year, I'm once again calling for a reduction. Wolf is talking about Pennsylvania's corporate net income tax. Simply put, this is the tax placed on typically large corporations to operate within a state. And at 10%, Pennsylvania's is the second highest in the U.S., behind only New Jersey's 11.5%. I think it creates that understanding that we're not as good as we should be that we're not performing to the extent that we need to be. PA Chamber of Business and Industry President Gene Barr says Pennsylvania's corporate income tax is unacceptable. He and Republican lawmakers argue it's keeping large corporate headquarters away. Think Amazon. It was so positive to hear that from the governor. It's something that our state needs. We lose businesses every day to Texas and Florida. If we can make Pennsylvania a more attractive place to get businesses here, then I'm all for having that conversation. What exactly is the governor proposing? It starts with cutting the current rate of 9.99% down to 799 by January 1st, then a path all the way down to 5% no earlier than in the next five years. We don't know whether the next pandemic is 100 years or when it is, but I think we ought to prepare as if it might be in five. Businesses are on board. Wolf and Democrats are on board. Republicans are on board. Not quite all the way. It's funny, in an election year, he proposes a tax cut. I would say that it's more electioneering uh, for him than it is in reality. At the end of the day, it's Harrisburg, and big changes may ultimately take time. The Wolf administration does estimate that lowering the corporate tax rate next year would lead to an $80 million loss in revenue. They believe the cost would be offset by the unused federal funds from the American Rescue Plan. I've just noticed that my bill this year has been higher every time. Inflation and rising prices are affecting everyone. After the break, why it's causing some to rethink financial goals, plus tips for offsetting the higher cost of goods. Welcome back. When it comes to rising prices, our Madeline Cudahy spoke with a woman who says she's balancing high grocery costs with pet bills, gas prices, and a host of other expenses that just keep adding up. For Gina Falcone, like millions of Americans during this turbulent economic time, budgeting has become an essential part of making sure her bills don't become overwhelming. It's, I've just noticed that my bill this year has been higher every time. I think my struggle mostly has been that with the lack of options in the grocery store, I have to find replacements that I'm not, not usually in my budget. For Gina, grocery store trips and gas prices mean she's not only had to change her routine, she's also had to rethink some of her financial goals and large purchases. Yeah, I think budgeting in the last year in particular has been more important than ever. Those are just everyday life things um, yeah. that I've been more conscious of. Greg McBride, an inflation and economy expert with Bankrate, says Gina's not alone. The biggest contributors to the increase that we had seen this month, food, electricity, and shelter. 
they're all necessities. There's no discretionary spending there. And so that's what's really squeezing household budgets. And because they're necessities, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. To fight inflation, the Fed may resort to a tool it hasn't used since the year 2000, a half point interest rate hike. It's a move McBride says still may not solve the price problem. Our best hope for 2022 is that we see the peak and it starts to recede a little bit, but uh, unless and until the supply chain is fully healed, we're going to be dealing with outsized price increases. And that's regardless of how aggressive the Federal Reserve gets in, in dialing back uh, accommodation to the economy. It's not gonna fix the supply chain. And until that happens, I think we're gonna be dealing with above trend inflation. For Gina, her concerns continue as she waits out our volatile economy. We've been through a pandemic. Lifestyles has, have changed. Priorities have changed. Spending has changed. Everything has changed. So I guess I'm not surprised that we're here. And I guess I'm just worried about there being no end in sight. Madeline, great story. A budgeting tip question. What are some tips that could help people down the line with you know, some of those big bills and cutting down on them at the end of the month? Well, we know people are struggling with that. And some of these may seem like simple chores, but even turning down the thermostat when you go to sleep, <laughs> replacing those air filters, washing your clothes in cold water, those are simple things. But the other thing you really want to make sure is that you are keeping track of your spending and cutting out any excess. I like the, the thermostat idea. Who, who doesn't like you know bundling up under the blankets <laughs> exactly. at the end of the night? Uh, what are some things experts suggest to do if you're looking to maybe save on groceries? That's a big one right now, of course. And of course, you want to go in with a list. We all know how tempting yes. it is to just start grabbing things. But we also want to make sure we're signing up for those loyalty cards, using those any rewards points you have for grocery stores. That is going to cost some costs as well. Those gas perks, they add up. Yes, <laughs> Cheap they do. gas, especially <laughs> now. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Madeline. And we'll be right back. For the past couple of weeks, we've been asking you to send in your economy questions, whether they be about your money or any current economic trends. And here to answer those questions for us is Dmitry Kuchevsky, Associate Professor of Economics at Elizabethtown College. Professor Kuchevsky, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we want to start with a question from Corey in Harrisburg, who wants to know why it seems like tax dollars are not being used for programs they should be. He pointed, for example, to road repairs and why we have programs to fix the roads and yet they always still seem bad. Well, it's a tall order for several reasons. Pennsylvania has the uh, longest mile per state in terms of roads, so we have the most roads, believe it or not. And that's the reason our uh, gas tax is the highest in the nation. And that's the money that's supposed to go towards road repair, but doesn't always. So it's ultimately up to legislature. And uh, typically it's a partnership between the state and the federal uh, programs. So some of it is tied in, in the infrastructure bill that, that uh, in the Senate's uh, arms on the federal level and some of it on the state level. Um, I don't know whether we're able to assess well how much the roads have been fixed as opposed to how much we want them to be fixed. I, I guess they can always do a better job, but mm. they, we sure have a lot of roads to fix to begin with. Uh, Sarah in Lancaster wants to know what effect rate hikes, for example, have on the economy and moving forward exactly, you know, what can we expect from them moving forward and how they would expect uh, or affect her own personal finances? So for the consumer, I think what the consumer will see is that there will be higher rates on everything from mortgages to car loans to credit cards. The Federal Reserve targets the baseline so they can target the demand side of the economy by uh, raising the interest rate. They can slow down the economic expansion and that comes at a cost of higher rates. So we will see money being more expensive, so to speak. So it's a tight money policy and consumers will see uh, mortgage rates go up. And, and last question is from Michael in Fairview Township, York County. He is retired and he's worried that the rising inflation might mean that he won't have enough savings to last through retirement and wants to know when he can expect the recent inflation surge to decrease. So there are two uh, parts of the inflation problem. One is the increased demand. The other one is the supply chain issues. The supply chain issues, I imagine, will be kind of sorted out as more and more production worldwide goes online and 
the the supply routes and the inventory issues are sorted out. In terms of the demand, it's not necessarily clear that it will be the situation. So some of the inflation that we see now is here to stay. No one knows how much it is here to stay. And for retirees, they're in an especially difficult situation because they don't get the advantage of uh, higher wages growth. In terms of social security recipients, they get cost of living adjustment every year. But if you have significant savings, which you plan to use during your retirement, I think a good conversation to have with your financial advisor is where those savings are and whether they're serving the purpose you thought they'd be serving. So you may want to reallocate your portfolio and really think where your money uh, currently is. Dmitry Krzyzewski, economics professor at Elizabethtown College. Thank you, sir, for your time. You got it. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Now, two full months into 2022 and nearly two years into the pandemic, the economy is in a more delicate position than ever. According to the International Monetary Fund, global growth is expected to moderate from 5.9% last year to 4.4% in 2022. That is half a percentage point lower for 2022 than in the World Economic Outlook predicted back in October. Looking further into the future, the IMF says global growth could slow even more, potentially down to 3.8% in 2023. Those predictions, though, are dependent on the grip of the pandemic loosening as vaccination rates improve worldwide and therapies become more effective. The emergence of any new COVID variants could induce renewed disruptions, only prolonging economic recovery. The IMF suggests that fiscal policy prioritize health and social spending to curb declining economic growth. The world is rapidly evolving and our economy is following suit. For the latest developments on the state of the economy here in Pennsylvania, across the country, or even around the world, stick to fox43.com. For now, keeping you money smart, I'm Matt Mazel. Have a good night.